and welcome back. It's now 10 minutes away from 7 o'clock and I promised before the break, we're sitting down with representatives from the Coastal Zone Management Authority to talk about Coastal Zone Awareness Week 2016. And joining us for this conversation, we have Coastal Planner, Samir Rosado, and we also have Data Researcher, Cleon Coleman. Good morning, gentlemen, and morning. welcome to the show. Morning, thanks for having us. Now, when we let's start off by framing, um, of course, coastal zone management is something that we've been having conversations about for a long time. Yes. Uh, why is this still an issue? Um, is it because of the development and uh, human activity that threatens everything along the coast? Well, coastal zone management will always be an issue in Belize because the coastal zone. Uh, and, and its coastal and marine resources are very, very important for us as Belizeans. Um, the resource, uh, as you know, Belize's economy is very natural resource driven and so many of our livelihoods in not only in Belize City but all coastal communities are linked to these resources and so we will never stop trying to find the best way to manage these resources. Uh, as you stated, there are uh, various threats that do exist, development being one and, you know, fishing, tourism, I mean, they're not threats per se, but they are um, major usages of the coastal resources that, you know, is something that definitely needs to be managed and needs to be looked at in order for us to maximize these resources over time to make it more sustainable. Now, when we, when we talk about the coastal zone management, uh, is it, what are the main threats that we have? Is it still clearing away of mangroves that is uh, worrisome in most cases? I mean, the, the main, the threats remain, you know, they remain the same. It's, um, if, and it's the same everywhere in that if you have unplanned development that isn't uh, checked or monitored regularly, then of course it's going to be very detrimental to the coastal zone and to the people that live there. If you have um, overuse by any one activity, it could be dredging, it could be tourism, it could be even from overfishing, you know? And even in population growth as well. Exactly. And so it's not per se, it's not to say that we have these, these novel threats that exist. The threat really is the mismanagement or no management of activities that re uh, utilize the, the resources. I know uh, last week, I think it was, uh, there were people with pictures of uh, around uh, the bliss and the drying out there. Is that a natural phenomenon given the fact that we're, where we're located that you will have uh, things like that happening? And uh, because it's concerning um, to quite a number of people, uh, I don't know if you all were aware of it and did any kind yeah. of uh, research or anything as to why it would happen. Was it just because of the, the changes in uh, climate uh, temperatures that we had? Well, um, honestly, I've, um, I've been asked, I have just been asked about that um, yesterday, actually. Um, I do not believe that in that particular instance that it was, um, it was only due to natural causes. Yeah. I think there may have been activities in the area that may have uh, exacerbated that uh, buildup of silt, but I am not sure. I can't say definitively what the, the, the causes were, but definitely it's a mixture of the two. It's natural processes with uh, human activity in the area. Now, let's talk a little bit about the program, because obviously your week of activities is not something that you do in isolation. Um, how robust is the program that you have in terms of engaging educational institutions or even the general public on a regular basis to let this not fall off the front burners in terms of uh, awareness and uh, concern, given the fact that we are a developing country and uh, we see so many areas where uh, we have the threats in our faces um, on a constant basis? Well. Um like with, with every agency or organization that uh, is government affiliated, or in our case, you know, uh, quasi-government, there are always that, um, that strain of resources to sort of get the message out because it's, um, it's not cheap to do 
awareness, basically. At Coastal Zone, we carry out public awareness wherever we could. We visit schools, we um, participate in, um, in uh, various uh, activities, activities that other organizations yeah. may, may... We are part of different um, working group and other things. Yeah. And so, um, but this Coastal Awareness Week that we're um, having next week is one of the main activities during the course of the year through which we try to channel our um, public awareness in order to divulge as much information as we can. And every year it's done to a theme to sort of emphasize different aspects of the coastal zone or different uh, issues that uh, have arisen over the years and how best Belizeans could you know, address these issues but do it in a way that they are learning while they are doing things that aren't necessarily you know, the science, like if we would put uh, students down in a room to, to read, you know, that wouldn't go over, go over as well. But instead, what we do, we find another way to engage the students that they, that's fun, and then they learn at the same time. Now, obviously, um, COP21 from Paris uh, is something that the entire scientific community, when you talk about anything that can be impacted by climate, is still uh, figuring out how uh, this can really benefit um, the work that they do. Has the uh, Coastal Zone Management Authority looked at what's coming out of um, that uh, meeting to see how it can tie in with uh, the work that you do? Well, yes. Um, we haven't, um, we haven't, since the meeting is finished, we haven't actually sat down and geared planning towards it. However, our CEO, Mrs. Uh, Chantal Clark Samuels, she actually attended COP21 along with, uh, she was a part of the delegation that went. And so we have that information from some of the sessions that, and I believe she attended the ones that directly applied to our work or maybe the ones that were delegated to her to attend, but um, we do have the information and it is something that we plan to incorporate in our work. So let's talk a little bit about this awareness uh, week for 2016. Uh, you were mentioning that you do have a theme. Uh, yes. How does that tie into the work that you do? Um, our theme is the, the course is ours, Let's Climate Proof It. Um, like I said, usually we have mostly like environmentalists and conservationists talking about climate change. Um, the course is ours. I don't think it's only environmentalists and conservationists should be um, um, advocating for the climate change. It should be everybody because climate change affects everybody, not just only the conservationists and environmentalists. So this this week of activities include um, for one our seminar series, which will be on the, the 24th of um, February, <coughs> which will include a panel discussion. And in this panel discussion, um, we have people from the business community and the private sectors. For example, people from the Sugar Industry Research Development Institute. Um, we have our uh, uh, insurance person. We will never hear about insurance people talking about climate change. So um, this will be very interesting to hear them talk about climate change. We also have a, a Ms. Katie from the Stanford University. Um, we have a person from Red Cross that they also will be talking about climate change. Um, the, the panelist discussion will last 10 minutes at the um, UB auditorium from 9 to 12. So everybody should come out and um, you know, listen to, the, to these people talk. They, they, they have three questions that they should answer in their um, presentation. Um, how does climate change affect their organization? What are some of the best practices they have incorporated incorporate in their organization to, to become climate resilient? And what are some success stories, um, barriers, or opportunities they have encountered while, um, while dealing with climate resilient? Now, <clears throat> when you talk about, obviously there's some uh, things that I would, I would say are buzzwords right now yeah. in, in terms of what's happening, um, in terms of uh, work in the environment. You talk about climate, uh, making things climate uh, re resilient. Mm -hmm. What exactly does that mean? Well, Belize being a, a coastal country or an um, 
a country along the coast, yeah. right? Um, we're not faced with uh, the problem that major first world countries have, being uh, carbon emitters, being carbon sources. We're actually the carbon sink. We're the guys that have to sort of clean up after the bigger guys. And so really action in Belize is not based on mitigation per se, it's more adaptation. It's more being prepared to handle what comes next, especially in our case since our uh, economy is so largely based on natural resources, you know? So um, to, 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 to further my point, I mean, um, we, st we to, or basically to wrap it up, we stand more to lose if we don't adapt. Yeah. And so that, that, that aspect of resiliency and as the theme, uh, the theme suggests, you know, climate proofing our coast, that, that, that notion is very, very important because if we don't adapt, then many of the things that we enjoy today, many of the things that we utilize yeah. to, to earn, you know, our, our daily living will be gone. Now, even though the focus is on coastal um, zone, we know that uh, because of the size of our country, one, um, that you do have factors, like we've been talking for quite some time about the activity that happens in Chikibul and how that impacts everything as well. And you, you mentioned something just now about us not being one of, the, our carbon footprint is so small, but still uh, like so many other island states or coastal, um, coastal uh, states, we stand uh, to suffer quite a bit yes. um, as we talk about climate change and uh, rises in sea level, mm -hmm. you know, so many other things. Yeah. How do you make that message uh, something that it doesn't become kind of a Hollywood kind of blockbuster okay. kind of yeah. gloom and doom, uh, and, uh, but at the same time not let people become inactive in terms of just saying, well, it's going to happen anyway and we can't really do yeah. anything. Can we do um, things uh, to actually deal with some of the issues that we may face? Well, um, you know, the, the, the general public on a whole is uh, made up of, you know, people who, who think differently. And so the various approaches, sorry, various approaches are necessary in order to sort of reach everybody because it's very, very easy to sort of sit down and just be apathetic about it because everybody paints the picture, which is actually a reality, is, which is a reality that, you know, we will experience effects of climate change. It's, it's a, it's a no-brainer, you know, the science is out there and so it's very easy to get complacent. However, um, I think true, um, uh, uh, initiatives, sort of, uh, sort of like our Coastal Awareness Week, we could spread that message in a way that, you know, they could see real life applications of what adaptation measures look like and also see how it is, or learn how it is important to them as just the, the, the general public. And so um, maybe if I go through um, some of the, 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 some of the yeah, events, yeah. it would um, sort of frame how we are approaching it um, in this way. So, um, as we mentioned, or Coastal Awareness Week 2016, it's um, going to take place from February 22nd to the 27th. So it's six days of activities. Uh, it starts on Monday the 22nd with the opening ceremonies and launch of the Belize Integrated Coastal Zone Management Plan. Which is something that you all have been working on. Forever, so, yes, yeah. yes. It's been a while so it's, and it's, it's finally, finally it's been approved about three weeks ago. It got a uh, cabinet approval, so it is uh, endorsed by the government of Belize. So we're very, very happy and proud of that. But, and so, in order to, you know, our, our form of celebration or coming out, so to speak, to Belize, uh, we are launching the plan at our opening ceremony, and this will take place at the Old Belize Pavilion. Uh, that event is our more formal event, or the only formal event for the um, for the week, but, and so it's invitation only. Um, our day two, Tuesday the 23rd, we're having our second Belize Coastal Awareness uh, Primary School Trivia Competition. Uh, it will be held at the Bliss Institute for the Performing Arts from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Um, our first uh, trivia competition took place at the Birdzell and we had um, All Saints Primary School taking the first prize. 
So uh, this is the second. This is the second. Yes, yeah. yeah. this is the second one that we're doing, and um, <coughs> we um, the competition itself will be broadcasted live on More FM and Love FM, and um, prizes the as a, the prizes include um, five hundred dollars on a tablet, uh, second prize three hundred dollars on a phone. And third prize, two hundred dollars, and a tour for two from uh, courtesy of Chucka. And so there, there, and as well, all the participants um, will receive consolation prizes just for participating. So it's not something that we, you know, yes, you didn't win, and you know, you don't, you go home empty-handed, you know. So it, um, the last time we had it, you know, the the, the turnout was great, the um, competition went smoothly, and so we expect the same will happen this year. Um, our next event is uh, Wednesday the 24th, uh, which is our um, seminar, seminar on climate change. Um, yeah, Cleon, Cleon explained what that, that was, yeah. but um, basically, as he mentioned, it's, uh, we sort of wanted to give the, the topic of climate change real world application. So um, we have very good speakers. Our guest moderator is Dr. Ulrich Trotz from the Caribbean Community Climate Change Center. And we have a keynote address from Ms. Ann Gordon from the National Climate Change Office. So again, very centered um, around that climate change theme. Um, in fact, the, the topic being discussed is actually climate change adaptation in action. Um, on the 25th of February, we will have our, informa our coastal information fair in ecumenic at, at the ecumenical gymnasium in um, Stankirk. Uh, we know. Um, the people in the south are the ones that are facing the most climate change um, effect. And what we want to do is bring awareness in that era about um, climate change. So what we'll be doing, we have different government and non-governmental organizations out there um, talking about what they do um, in relation to climate change and also what they do on a, on a whole. Um, this will be taking place at from 9 to 3 um, p.m at the, like I said, the Ecumenical Gymnasium. And um, so uh, one of, and that, that event that he just mentioned was very important because one of the comments we got from the first Coastal Awareness Week, which was in 2014, um, was that everything was belize centric. centric. And so we're slowly trying to creep out to the other coastal communities. And so that was the, um, that was the event that we decided we need to have in, this, in, in another coastal community. And we know that we've had some, uh, we've seen some of the impacts down south. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yes. Definitely Hopkins, uh, Monkey River. Yes. And even uh, Gales Point, Manatee. Gales Point, yeah. We've seen massive um, erosion. erosion yeah. And is that something that is still continuing, or has it died down somewhat? Um, I'm, I'm not sure the, 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 the rate now. I know the erosion is still happening, or taking place. I'm not sure to what degree. I don't know if it's slowed or increased, but it's something that, you know, it, um, there are various factors, you know. You, there's not just one thing that you could point out to say this is causing the erosion. Yeah. It's always a, a mixture of stuff, you know, and it's even to some degree seasonal. You might say it increases during maybe the wet season, you know, or and so it's it's hard to say. Yeah, and that even, one thing. Even sometimes you see the the beach erode, and then when you go back, you see the beach come up. But when the beach come up, it it it's not as much as when it was there before. So all of that. Yeah. So and so we also thought it was very important to have these organizations down there to sort of put this uh, phenomena in perspective, you know, to, f to have the general public come in and they might, they, of course they have the same questions everybody yeah. is asking about this erosion problem and so we're trying to put the pe some of the people that, you know, deal with this in con communication with the general public in Dangria. So that's, um, so after that um, fair on the Thursday, we jump back to Billy City and we have a coastal right. fun yeah. night at the, the BTL Park. Uh, this one is open to the general public. Um, it begins at 7 and ends at 9. There will be uh, entertainment by uh, Positive Vibes and Consigo, and we'll also have um, the Holy Redeemer marching, marching band giving a performance. Uh, it's, it's also um, free admission. 
Yes. Uh, we will be giving away um, different prizes. You, you get to win different prizes. Also, they will have um, free liquor from travelers. So travelers will be out there as well. But you also have the clown for the kids. We have, the, we have also the clown and we have the bouncy house for the kids as Face well. Face painting. Face painting and, and so on and yeah. so forth. And we have tons of security, so it will be a very safe, <laughs> safe atmosphere yeah. for you to bring your, your family out and, you know, mom Enjoy and dad. Enjoy the course. You yeah. know, exactly. <laughs> Enjoy, Enjoy the, the breeze, course. You know? Learn more about the course. There will be different presentations that will be taking place from different um, individuals. Yes, and, and that is important because, as I mentioned, you know, we, d we wanted to have uh, facilitate learning in a fun yeah. environment and so we do have these one to one and a half minute plugs from various yeah. organizations talking about um, climate change adaptation during the course of the, um, so the edutainment the, yeah exactly yes. right then I believe um, one so the last day it's the run for the course it's to bring awareness of our coastal ecosystem um, we know a lot of people you not know, like get up the morning, early in the morning for your run. I know, I don't know if I ever see you out there running, will um, <laughs> yeah. invite you this time. I'm not a runner, <laughs> but <laughs> will they invite you this time. Um, the run will be taking place from the BTL to the lighthouse. Um, reg registration starts at 5:30. It's free, so everybody could come out <coughs> and run for the course to bring awareness and to, um, the, about the value of our Belizean coast and marine resources. Um, the first 20 participants will get a free uh, T-shirt. Yeah, t -shirt. yeah. yeah. Um, we we'll have light. We have light refreshments. Um, the first male and female will get a prize. The first, the first um, child, male and female, will get a prize. And the, I mean, the first male and the first male and female over 12 will get a prize, and the first male and female under 12 will get a prize as well. So it's for the entire family. It's for the entire family, yeah. so you could bring on everybody. And it's not really like a, we do have prizes to award those first couple, you know, people uh, when it's they not finish. A competition but it's not a competition. Yeah, no. You know, you could come out and walk for the course yeah. if you want. But um, I mean, last the year, point is last come year out, we you know? see um, people come out with their prom and their leap, their, their lead toddler and the prom and they, they run the whole way or they walk. So I don't see why we, can, we cannot get up and go out and run. And it's only three miles. Yeah, it's only three miles from the BTL yeah. park to the lighthouse and back to the park. And so it's very short. Um, so it's a very diverse uh, list of activities yes. for the week um, itself. And we do encourage people to come out and uh, definitely participate and learn yeah. uh, a bit more. Now, one of the things that I want to just simply revisit um, is <coughs> access for the the plan that you've been working on for so long. Once it's launched, um, the uh, how will people be able to have access? Will it be uh, on the, on the, on the website, online, yeah. your website, yeah. etc.? Yes, it's um, it's actually it's posted to our website. We've done um, a ton we have done tons of iterations of the plan mm -hmm. over the years, and every time we've finished a new one, we post we post it to our website. Mm -hmm. And if not, um, if somebody has difficulties uh, accessing the plan online, they could come into our office and we could provide copies and so on and so forth. It's a very large document, so printed copies is kind of hard, you know, but like we have electronic copies available whenever. Yeah. Well, that's one of the things we definitely have to get you guys back to just focus on the plan itself yes. and what yeah. it means in terms of what we do, not only here in Belize, but uh, regionally as well because we're tied into what happens with the region mm -hmm. right yes no, definitely well gentlemen I want to thank you both for joining um, me this morning to talk about the uh, plans for coastal zone awareness week 2016 20, it takes place uh, from the 22nd Second, to yes, the 27th yes. and there are activities all over the country that will be tied into that and it's being held under the theme the coast is ours, let's yes, climate proof it. So, um, any final words? Um, before we go, we want to um, mention our sponsors. Um, our sponsors include um, Grace, Exotic Eco Adventures, A Plus Computer Solutions, Backup Eco Park, Belize Chamber of Commerce, Richard Holder Photos, um, Banana Bank Lodge, the Protective Era 
Era Conservation Trust Park, um, UB, BTB, Serious Adventures, um, Biltmore, Sol Lilies, um, pl Plastic Packaging, um, The Framing Shop, Niche, Sunbreeze Hotel, Cybertronics, mm. BTL, United Motors, um, WCS, so the Wildlife Conservation Society, um, the Toledo Institute for Development and Environment, TIDE, Thursday Thursdays, the Chateau Caribbean Hotel, um, WWF, the Belize City Council, Island Magic Beach Resort, the Ecological Program International, um, the BRC Printing, Blue Fly, Mirab, Travelers Liquors, Chocolate Tours, Old Belize, the Angelus Press, Oceana, Tropic Air, Courts, Brothers Habit, Atlantic Bank, and Suzuki Motors. Oh, sorry, yeah, Ocean Ferry, uh, Crystal Niche. So, yeah, I think those are all, but we have um, a ton of um, private sector and, yeah. uh, you know, NGO support. And we're very, we're very happy for that, and it's very encouraging. So, I'd like to say thank you to all our sponsors for uh, having, uh, for um, giving us that, uh, you know, that motivation, you and know, encouragement to exactly want to, to do this, to not only today but um, years to come. And uh, also yeah. invite the general public, please come out to our events. Um, they're free, they're fun, and you know, and you can learn. Exactly. You can learn. All right, and you can find them definitely on Facebook, or you can go to their website if you need more details of the information for uh, Coastal Zone Awareness Week uh, 2016, February 22nd to the 27th. Well, gentlemen, thank you once again for joining us. Well, thank All you right, for having us. We're going to go ahead and take a break. And when we come back, it'll be to focus on business process outsourcing, or BPO, the summit, and what it means for Belize. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back after these messages.